These days, Havala and Ryan Gee spend a lot more time in their front yard since they turned it into an interactive garden. Well, eight years ago, honestly, it was just, you know, uh, what the, the kind of yard that you get when that comes with a standard tracked home yard. You know, you have the trees and the grass and the hedge. You know, the hedge in front. And it, it didn't look bad. It just... It wasn't uh, special. Yeah, it didn't have the personality that yeah. we wanted. Then they met designer Elizabeth McGreevy. We were watching uh, Central Texas Gardener as it happens. <laughs> True. And um, we saw a design that we really liked. And we had been saving up some money for a, a Kit yeah, camera, kitchen a digital camera. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, a dishwasher. kitchen appliance. Yeah. A dishwasher, that's right. <laughs> Yep. And so I turned to Havel, I said, why don't we do something out of the ordinary? They wanted to be able to use the front yard. And I get this a lot from people. People will say, well, we never use that space, so don't do anything over there. I said, well, the reason you're not using that space is because there's nothing to use. And I love to create outdoor living spaces to make our yards more livable. The Gee's front yard had become a lot less livable when Oakwilt took out all their red oaks. Then they said they wanted Austin chic. And I'm like, I know exactly what you want. So I, the next day after I got the design, I <clears throat> got a shovel and I went out and started digging and I dug for about a year. <laughs> <And> <laughs> There's like hills and you're a little yeah. bit perfectionist and you wanted it flat, flatter so it looked more streamlined, I guess. That's right. Yeah, and I would, um, I, all little, of my spare time went to this project I would, um, you know, even at night, I'd be out with an audio book listening. And a floodlight. And a floodlight. Our neighbors were very patient <clears throat> with us through the whole process. <laughs> yes, they were wonderful because neighbors. Because there was a lot of, there, they must have been wondering a lot of the time. <laughs> One of the first things we did was we covered up all of the grass with a black tarp. Yeah, to, to kill, kill it. Yeah. And so that was there for... <laughs> for Halloween. Several weeks. <laughs> that was the first Halloween. Someone said, uh, are you making a graveyard? <laughs> I guess a grass get graveyard. I had this idea because their house and, and property is so long is to have these lines going through the property to also, you know, to decrease runoff, you know, to kind of act as little tiny check dams. I came up with this idea to, you know, have these concrete bands kind of slicing through the front yard to also divide and help break it up into manageable areas because it is such a large space. And for one, this helps to unify the space, but it also creates these distinct areas to help break it up into smaller you know, blocks. They wanted a very kind of clean geometric look. And so then I emphasized that with the way that the plantings were done and big swatches, which I prefer to do plants and swatches because that's how you find it out in nature. You'll always find big clusters and colonies of the same plant. Then you might have a sporadic, you know, little plant coming up here and here, that kind of thing. And my other thing is that I love for a yard to look good all the time, and so I like working with textures and shades of green. And so we have the dark green of the Zoysia Cavalier with the silver of the silver pony foot. And then you have the larger textured leaves of the Turk's cap. And then you have the gray and then the larger stiff texture of the agaves backed by all the soft bright greens of the bamboo muley. So you get these layers of textures and colors, which actually makes their yard feel a lot deeper. And then I said to Ryan, I said, I love vegetable gardening. Well, what's fun about it is I have little kids and I can say everything in this square is edible and, you know, you can taste it and they can walk around and that's really fun. Spices and fragrant plants work best because we have a deer problem. Yes. Here. Yeah. And so we were originally going to put tomatoes and beans and the beans grew great and the deer really appreciated it. They were thankful every time I replanted them. They were like, thank you. They were regular customers. Yeah, they were regular customers. So we had to really rethink <laughs> our front yard garden. So now I'm big into onions. I have leeks and chives, you know, things that are really fragrant because then the deer turn their nose up at them. The foragers they invite with open arms are the neighbors, sealing friendships with fresh food. In their organic garden full of lots of plants for pollinators, they let the lizards and beneficial insects naturally keep a balance on pests. To make more room for neighborly chats on the front porch, Elizabeth widened it two feet with extension slabs. Now there's plenty of space for friends and the geese for children. 
To stretch out a bit more under the bur oak, Elizabeth added a conversation area that mimics the curved walkway. The conversation area was really Elizabeth's idea. We felt that it was kind of wasted space. And we also the, wanted to be able to be out here and enjoy the neighborhood and mm -hmm. the neighbors and have a place outside to congregate. Elizabeth used quarter inch minus limestone that packs well, deters weeds, and lets rainfall seep through gently. Low maintenance Texas sedge, bamboo muley, and turks cap add their own version of geometry. It's just really inviting, but also very stylistically bold. Native silver ponyfoot sets the stage. One of the great things is, is that it takes some of the least effort. I mean, water, everything. You put that in the ground and it just goes and it's so happy. Low water cavalier zoysia completes the textual conversation in strips that unify the rectangular yard. By planting it lower and not scalping, deep roots hold in moisture. When it was full grown, I wanted it to be level with the sidewalk. So I made sure to dig until several inches below the level of the sidewalk and then lay the sod and that way I don't have to cut it as much and it can look really full and luxurious and choke out the weeds because it's so full. And I prefer not to cut it. <laughs> we love gardening and just to stand back and see the whole picture, it really makes you feel great. Part of it is the work that you put into it makes yes, it something that is so uh, true. something special for you and your family. Because it comes part of it's your family. It's unique to you, you know, the home has belonged to many people but this yard is, is, ours. is ours. And I come out here with my son and I read to him and we'll come out at night and we'll lie in this very thick, they beautiful will. grass and we'll look at the stars with our little iPhone app and we love it. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be inside and I'm like, where did my husband go? And then after I've done a, the usual sweep, I'm like, oh yeah, I know where he is. What's great is my one-year-old loves to come into the yard. He will come in the house, get my shoes, and he'll, he can't say anything yet. He's like, ah, da, ah, da, and he'll give me my shoes, like practically throw them at me because he wants to be out here. And being in the front yard, I can't tell you how many moms are walking their kids in the evening, trying to blow off their steam, and they get to meet my kids. There's people I would have never met because they're down around the block, and they come up and they talk and they introduce their kids. We get a lot of drive-bys. <laughs> because they stare. People who slow down and stare. And they do home. slow down, but Rubber we neck. feel good. That's why we have to announce it to each other. We're like, there's a drive-by. And then we feel good about all the effort because yeah, that makes it fun, right. you know. And we were Yard of the Month, so there you go. <laughs> oh, and I have to mention this, that when we did start this project, I turned to Hovland and I said, I think we should make it our goal to be on Central Texas Gardener. So this is we a did. karmic experience, right? And here. we said that it would be a great idea. And it was like karma. I can't I'm believe serious. it's happening. <laughs>